everyone, and welcome back to the Fall Game Night Kit Tournament that happened at Millennium Games in Rochester, New York, back in October. My name is Tim, and I'm going to be with you here for a game today between Ben on the left playing Waylon's Blue Sun, and Kevin on the right playing Reina Roja of the Anarch faction. Uh, Anarch was very heavily represented at this tournament. A uh, pretty large chunk of the people that showed up were playing Anarch, and almost all of the people that finished in sort of the top of the tournament were playing Anarch as well. So not exactly sure why that was the case. Uh, Order and Chaos came out quite a while ago, but everyone is pretty high on Anarch, I suppose. Uh, so Ben on the left, of course, playing Blue Sun, that Whalen identity that seems to be the only one that's seeing play. There's a handful of people playing Gagarin and a few Titan builds as well. Uh, but that ability is just so nice that it's hard to pass up. And so typically, Anarch is a, a fairly challenging matchup for Blue Sun because they've got easy access to David. And especially out of Blue Sun, you're generally looking to oversight AI one of your big barriers and use that to boost your early econ. And David really just heavily denies that. And Rain on the other side just drops a day job and waits. <laughs> uh, Kevin is a, is a big Anarch player in our area. He's known for playing some pretty punishing Anarch decks. So I'll be expecting some pretty pretty heavy events coming in at some point, but of course we don't know what to expect just yet. So running in on R&D and seeing an Enigma, which keeps him out of there. Couldn't quite see Ben's hand and know whether or not he's sitting on anything or what kind of strategy he's going to. So far he's just been icing and moneying, which pretty much any corp wants to do, so no big tells there. Uh, Kevin drops a same old thing, so indicating he's got... Some big run events, perhaps just events in general, that he's looking to recur. Ben is sitting on six credits, setting up a scoring remote there, it looks like. And just crediting up. So he's hit just one hedge fund and running in straight away in HQ. No res, likely meaning there's nothing in there that Ben is nervous about. And we see a Jackson and Trasses it straight away. and liberated accounts. So a lot of this, the solid Anarch Econ pieces coming out, just getting everything up and running while Blue Sun is still a little low on cash. Uh, at this point in the game, you don't really have to worry about being threatened with a kill or anything. Ben's on pretty low money. And installing into that remote. So sitting behind two ice, it's unlikely that he would go for a score at this point, I would think, sitting only on seven credits. So Kevin checks HQ to likely try to just drain him of some money or snipe anything that may be in there. And we see something that is not trashable, I don't believe. Couldn't quite tell what it was. Got quite a bit of money sitting on liberated accounts, so not too worried about spending money at this point on Kevin's side. So it takes a little off and vamps. So what? So Ben reses a shadow in response, which has a trace for a tag and another subroutine that gives money to the corp. So lets that one fire, which puts him at five credits, and then the trace fires. And will he? So I think you don't want to spend any on the trace here because you want to make Kevin spend his money on this vamp rather than just throwing it away. But it looks like Ben is thinking about boosting the trace. So he boosts into the trace a little bit there. Which, I mean, Kevin is going to be taking a tag from the vamp anyway. Uh, so this will throw another tag on top of there. And now considering whether to vamp the money away. So he's only on three credits. So he takes the access instead. And we see nothing. So likely thinking that if he wants to challenge that remote, that three credits isn't all that much to be afraid of, uh, but instead clears the tag with the final click. And so Ben drawing up, and we find out, was that an agenda? So this is a tricky spot that even if that was an agenda, that he was able to rush out there, he's going to be spending the rest of his money to score it out. And his ice is pretty low strength there on the remote, or on the central, sorry. 
And so we see an oversight AI go down, so strengthening that remote a little bit. And that will also allow him to bring it back to hand for some money if he needs it. So sitting on four credits, but with Blue Sun, you're always sitting at your credit total plus the highest piece of ice you have on the board in case you're worried about the kill as the runner, which often for Blue Sun is a win condition. And so we've seen Vamp come out so far and a same old thing, meaning that Kevin still has access to the Vamp if he wants it and likely has some other punishing events that we should be expecting to see. So haven't seen any pieces of the breaker suite. I don't know if he's running AI breakers like Faust or Eater or something like that, or if it's more the traditional Anarch breaker suite. And so one advancement over there in the remote. So that was an agenda sitting over there. Ben, I think wisely choosing not to spend his money to score it out. Okay, and we do see it is Eater. And so likely we're, when I see Eater, I'm expecting account siphons, keyholes, just all types of terrible, terrible run events. And so usually we'd see this kind of Eater style deck out of Max, just because it gives you that built-in draw effect. Uh, but Reyna does mean that you're going to be putting a little more economic pressure on the Corp. And so with the combination of, well, I'm expecting Account Siphon, and then the vamp that we saw previously, uh, it kind of puts the screws to the Corp in a little bit of a different way, where Max is all about restricting their options via eliminating their cards, uh, whereas Reyna is more about restricting their credits. And so Siphon's through the Shadow, taking the tags, and then running over on the remote. Uh, he won't be able to access what's down in the bottom there, but he will be able to trash out that oversighted ice with Eater. And just reminding him that the ice gets trashed when it gets broken while it has oversight installed on it. So Ben's sitting on no money and has an advanced, what we can assume is maybe an agenda sitting there in the remote. And Kevin is on Eater and has access to repeated account siphons and vamps. So this is going to be pretty tough. So replacing that ice and taking a couple credits. So we haven't really seen any of Ben's influence so far. So it's not really clear whether he's going for some kind of kill or he's just trying to glacier up. So a nice wall keeps him out for now. And of course, if he breaks it with Eater, then he can't access the remote anyhow. Uh, so likely there's some kind of alternative plan to get into remotes. A lot of times it's singularity or just relying on uh, siphoning down money so that they can't res things. And so Ben is... So it's kind of tough to see what's in Ben's hand there. Uh, again, just crediting up, but Kevin again has access to Account Siphon. And actually, if he goes through Shadow, it will give Ben two more credits for him to siphon away. So, hard times for Ben. Nope, oh, and he's holding another siphon in hand, it looks like. So it doesn't even need to use the same old thing. So it looks like he's thinking about it. Seems to make sense to me, so. Siphoning. Yep, Shadow gives him... <laughs> the full five so that Kevin's can siphon it away and stacking tags to the ceiling at this point. He's got a pretty significant credit advantage, uh, so not too worried about getting uh, Scorched Earth or anything like that. And drops a Yogg so that Enigma is no more and he can actually get real access off of R&D, so doesn't have to rely on Keyhole. He can actually go in with Medium or something like that if he wants to. Ben again just crediting up and Kevin still has access to Account Siphon, uh, so not only is he denying Ben credits, it's inflating his economy. It's kind of that good old-fashioned criminal-style econ where you just <laughs> siphon until you're blue in the face, something we haven't actually seen in quite a while. It was a pretty dominant strategy for a long part of the early game, but criminal a little on the back foot these days, 
and dropping in the Plaskery just in case. So big credit advantage for Kevin, and he's pretty protected from tag punishment, unless, of course, Ben is running something like a closed accounts or bad times even. I don't think I've ever seen anyone actually play bad times, but it seems like such a cool card. But anyway, back to the game. So drops another Plaskrete. So I don't think there's any way this is happening. And Ben just crediting up again. So Kevin able to keep him below the credit total where he can kind of burst up. Uh, in this case, it might be wise to just bounce that shadow out of there uh, with the blue sun ability because it's just giving Kevin more money and it's not doing anything to stop him from getting into HQ. Oh, and the double mediums come down. We're getting serious. And just yogging through that enigma. And we've got two mediums ticking up. So looking at three cards. Trashing out a breaker bay grid, it looks like. And an Amazon Industrial Zone, I think that is, which is pretty nifty with Blue Sun. Use it to res things for cheap and then get him back at full value. Okay, and so he finally is able to score out the Atlas that was there, but this probably means a full turn of medium, uh, two mediums in fact, so this is going to be a lot of cards Kevin's going to be seeing off R&D, especially since he just trashed a couple on his last run through. Going in on R&D, looking at five cards. So yeah, another another possible play there for Ben would have been bouncing that Ice Wall back to hand with his Blue Sun ability and overwriting the Enigma. That would have at least kept Kevin out for a little bit. Uh, and he just keeps trucking in on R&D. So five points ripped off the top. That's... Hollywood re renovation, I think. And, yeah, just seeing tons of cards off of R&D. And that's it. Picks an Atlas up. So that is the game. So, yeah, Kevin was able to really just control the flow of the game there by repeatedly account siphoning and then applying that heavy medium pressure when it was time. And so, yeah, was also able to get into Yogg pretty, pretty quickly and then that shadow on HQ was actually kind of detrimental to Ben. It kept giving Kevin a lot of credits and wasn't doing anything to stop him. Okay, so we saw Caprice was over there in the, the remote, so likely this was a, a Glacier-style Blue Sun, spending a lot of the influence on protecting his remotes, and there's an NAPD we see. So fortunately, didn't really get to see it play out uh, because Kevin just got on top of him really fast and never let him recover. So... We will have the second game of this round coming up very soon, and then we'll have some more rounds from Swiss after that, so hopefully we will see you guys soon. Thanks for watching.